So how is everyone? How is everyone? All right. That's what I'm talking about. Um, it really is a pleasure for me to be back um, in Portland, but for me to be here at Tribal Spirit, at Earth uh, and Spirit. So I am from a Dagara tribe in Burkina Faso, one of the smallest uh, uh, countries uh, touched um, between uh, Ghana and Ivory Coast. It's a landlocked country, so if you don't know about it, it's okay. Um, sometimes I, when I tell people I'm from Burkina Faso, they say, what? It's the name of an animal? I say, it looks like it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in this small country, uh, French speaking, uh, as its official language, um, because we have 60 languages uh, with 60 tribes, yes. Uh, not counting the, um, uh, the dialect. And that, that is a whole different ball game altogether. Because sometimes you cannot even understand, you know, the dialect uh, that they're speaking. And um, in this community, um, they're not really different from other indigenous communities around the world. Um, except that maybe they're a little bit crazier. Um, <laughs> in fact, the Dagra people are called the wild people, the, the one who is always going away. Um, and um, uh, we, don't, we don't have a hierarchy in the community. We do have elders, and the elders are very uh, important. The elders, along with the children, create a stable environment for all of us to have some form of sanity. And so uh, for us, children are the messengers from spirit, or in fact, spirit, coming to test our genuineness, our willingness, and our sincerity. And so when a child appears in, at your door, you don't ask, who child is this? You take care of a child first, and then you start to find out who it is. Because spirit may be taking the form of a child, showing up in front of your door, and if you neglect this child, then you have to answer to spirit. Um, and so in the same way, um, uh, the elders are important because they hold the vision of the community. Uh, they help um, not only pave the way for us, but they also help to um, inspire or jumpstart us. Um, so that we can also begin to bring our gift into the world. And so what is this thing about fanning the fire of the community? Um, why, you know, community altogether? You know, we have been talking about communities for ever and ever, and the topic still comes. So what is it about communities that we need to talk about community? You see, if you went to my village with this uh, question, they will tell you there is no answer. Just stop asking questions and live it. That, that's as simple as that. Um, uh, you see, in the village, it's about uh, doing. You know, it, there is a need for something, just get up and do it. So don't sit and talk about it. You know, you drive everybody crazy. <laughs> um, and so, so uh, community, you know, how do we define community in such a diverse world? In such a world where some of us are born in Europe and then we come here and some of us are born in Oregon and then we find ourselves in Alaska and some other wander around, they go to California and then, you know, you know, it's very complicated from that, uh, uh, that point onward. Um, but there is uh, something important about community, and that's why we keep on coming back to it. Um, and um, in my tradition, uh, community is the guiding light behind any being, any uh, person that helps that person or being achieve their life purpose. For without a community, an individual is lost without a place to contribute, without a place where the light can be shine, uh, shone upon them. And so I believe that is uh, that very peace that creates that uh, longing for us, the longing for the community. Who can see me? 
who can accept me, not tolerate me. Because you only tolerate when you don't know what else to do not to kill the person. <laughs> it's true. And so, so community basically goes into the really nitty gritty of our human need. It is at the core of our human existence because upon community comes relationships. And we all know that healthy relationships are at the heart of uh, every human life. Without a healthy relationship, you know, we will continue to do therapy until we die and come back and die again. And nothing is going to change. And so what we are yearning for is basically a place that will give us that uh, uh, home. Not just a physical home, because a lot of us have homes and we even have alarms in them. And sometimes we go uh, back, the alarm is still on, and we're still looking in the closet in case someone got in there. Yeah? So the home we are really longing for is not something that is outside somewhere. The home that we are looking for is actually in the heart, in the soul of other people out there. And so this notion that you cannot come, uh, you go back home is true. And it is also true that you can go home. And so um, how do you go home um, in a context where you don't have a physical home? You can go home to the heart of the people who hold you in or who have always held a space there for you. It doesn't matter whether you have well behaved, it doesn't matter whether you are the craziest child they have ever seen, but as long as someone has a space in their heart for you, you will always go home. And so that's why in the Dagger tradition they say either we are all going to go home or no one goes home. And that is why, you know, people who are homeless really help us to look at our own home homelessness. It's not because we live in a home that we don't feel homeless. We still feel that longing for someone to recognize who we are beyond, you know, the need for other people to make us what they want us to be so they can feel comfortable. But people who really know that there is a spirit in this person, that there is a spirit that has come with a purpose, a spirit with a purpose that, uh, whose gift needs to be received so they can be freed. Um, because if we are not here with spirit, uh, uh, with gift, then what are we doing here? And so the part of the fanning of the community fire is to find that uh, gift within the community where we belong, the gift that our community must receive. And that is, um, um, that is part of uh, uh, the reason why we're continuously creating clubs, why we're continuously looking for one more degree, hoping that it's going to um, now give us permission to go out and live our purpose instead of making a living. Because those are two separate things. In a context where your gifts are valued, where what you bring is exactly what the community needs. You don't need to make a living. All you need to do is to be yourself and live your purpose. And that is part of the reason why uh, the government doesn't like artists very much. Because, <laughs> because they don't conform, despite the fact that they have created all kind of mold to beat them into them and stomp them into them, they still manage to escape. And they continue to do what they need to do. But thank God for it. Because if they don't create art, if they don't make art, we'll all go crazy. Art is what breathes heart into the community. Art is what keeps us sane. And so, um, so how do we then create this space? for the artists? How do we create this space for the children? How do we create this space 
for the elders and for us. And is that a possible thing in this mobile community? Well, we'll find out.